Hi, today we're going to do an unboxing and first impressions video of the Sennheiser ME66 shotgun microphone and the K6 powering module. For the videos that I've been recording recently, I've been using the XY microphone that comes on the Zoom H6n. And while this is a really nice high quality stereo microphone, you do have to be reasonably close to the microphone in order to um, set your levels so that you don't pick up too much background noise. But the, also the VU meter is on the end of the device that you can't see when you're behind the microphone, so it is slightly tricky to set those levels. So I'm really hoping that the shotgun microphone is going to help a lot with this, meaning that I can have the H6N in view and I can see the VU meters and adjust the levels accordingly. So let's start by unboxing the two boxes that I've got here, and then we'll do a comparison video between the shotgun microphone and the microphone that comes with the H6N. So when I was choosing which microphone to select, it, there was really a choice between the Rode NTG2, the newer model, the NTG4, and then the Sennheiser ME66. The NTG2 retails for around £160 in the UK, and then there's the NTG4, which is quite a new model at the moment, so it's retailing around £260, and then there's the ME66, uh, which on its own you can purchase for about £150, uh, but then you need the powering module so that you can either phantom power it or power it from an AA battery. Um, so that brings the cost up um, to slightly more expensive than the NTG4, although uh, some places sell it for around the same price. Um, I did some listening tests, um, so I had a look at some audio samples from various uh, microphones and the ME66 does sound slightly better than the NTG4 and at the frequencies that you would typically um, look at for speech the ME66 is slightly more sensitive and slightly more directional so that's more suited to my needs so I decided I'd go for the ME66. So let's start by unboxing the microphone first. It comes in a brown cardboard box. It's not really a retail device so it's not going to have any fancy packaging. And if we open it up, uh, we've got some instructions and the guarantee. And then inside the bubble wrap, we have the microphone module itself. And that looks to be a nice high quality uh, device. It comes in a black anodized finish and it feels like it's made from aluminium. It weighs 65 grams. Um, and it's pretty light really. Um, 221 millimeters long and 22.5 millimeters in diameter. Um, so you can see here's the, the mesh. And then was, we move down the device. And you can see the Sennheiser branding and just an indication of the pattern. So this is a supercardioid or low bar pattern. And then at the end, you'll notice we don't have an XLR connector. So in order to use this microphone, you do need the K6 or the K6P powering module. So this is useless on its own. Um, so if you're buying uh, this microphone, remember you need to account for the cost of the K6 or the K6P, unless you already have one. Um, so that looks really nice. Let's have a look at the K6P powering module. So here we have the box that the powering module comes in. Again, same brown box. And we have a case for the microphone. It's got some tape around the outside. If we open this up, again, we've got the instructions and guarantee. We have a microphone clamp. A couple of AA batteries. We've got space for our microphone here and then we have the K6 powering module so you can see you put your 1.5 volt battery in here if you're not using phantom power and then we have our XLR connector on the end and then we've just got a battery uh, on switch. Uh, we've got an LED here and then we've got a high pass filter switch 
so that we can turn on the high pass filter to try and reduce some rumble from handling noise. Got the CE marking on the back and a screw. And Sennheiser branding, which you don't see once it's screwed into the module. And it just takes an AA battery if you want to use the battery. And it should just screw together. And there you have the ME66 with the K6 powering module. So I think to start with, I will power this from an AA battery rather than using phantom power on the H6N. So we'll put the battery in. Um, what seems odd is that the battery marking shows positive at this end, uh, but we have the spring here and we have a stud at this end and it would normally be the other way around. Um, so I might just quickly check that they've stuck that label the correct way around because that seems slightly odd. So I've just had a quick look on the internet and that does appear to be correct. So it's slightly odd that the battery is inserted that way around when you have the spring on the positive, but we'll go with that. And we'll screw it into the microphone itself. And then we've got an LED here. which does light up when you turn it on briefly. Okay, so we'll give this a test. So I have the shotgun microphone approximately 12 inches away from my mouth, and if we start turning up the level on channel three, we should start seeing the level on the H6N. You can see the VU meter here. Um, at quite a reasonable level, just at uh, setting five on the dial, which is quite a lot lower than you normally need to have the XY microphone at the same distance. If we go up a bit more, it will start to clip probably. Um, you can see it's starting to clip here. Uh, but volume five seems to be a, a good reasonable level, so we'll do a quick test. Check, check, check one, two, check one, two. Right, so I've set up the two microphones approximately an inch apart vertically, uh, but they're pointing in the same direction. So uh, we should just be able to do a comparison of the two microphones now. I've kept the levels exactly as they were before. Um, so check, check, one, two, three, four, five. Check, one, two, three, four, five. And then we can do a test to see how the volume is affected as we move off axis. So you should notice that the Zoom H6N has a stereo microphone, so you should get some stereo imaging as I move around, whereas the shotgun microphone is obviously just a mono microphone. So as we move around, we should probably hear uh, me moving on the Zoom H6N, and then on the Sennheiser, I can't quite get around that side too far, but on the Sennheiser, you should start to notice my voice being attenuated as we move around the microphone um, and then being the strongest on axis just here. So now I've moved back to about 36 inches and we can compare the Zoom H6. Um, if I turn the gain up, you'll notice on the H6N that we start to pick up a lot more background noise. So I've got that on level 9 now. And you can hear probably the PC that I've got running in the background. And we'll just do a similar comparison with the Sennheiser. So hopefully there's a slight difference in levels there. But I'm about um, 36 to 48 inches away now. So we'll just do another test. I'm speaking at the same volume as I was to start with. So check, check, one, two, three, four, five. And I'll just turn the volume back down. And on the Zoom H6, I've not got any compression or anything like that on, so the levels are exactly um, as they are all the time, so it shouldn't increase the volume levels when there's silence. So hopefully that's a, an interesting uh, comparison between the two microphones. Um, I'll listen back to the audio qualities and then maybe I'll add a, a short section to the end of this video just to summarise and give my thoughts. So I've just listened back to the audio on the computer with headphones on and to my ears the sound from the XY microphone on the Zoom H6N definitely sounds a bit more dynamic and lively um, but the shotgun microphone is definitely better at distance so I was looking at the levels while I was editing the audio and the shotgun microphone only lost about two to three decibels 
when I increased the distance from 12 inches to between 36 and 48 inches, whereas we were losing probably um, six or seven decibels on the zoom, which means I had to turn up the gain quite a lot to get the same kind of result. So overall I'm quite happy with the results from the shotgun microphone. It's a lot more useful because now I can have it on the end of the microphone mount so I can just have it directly above my head and not have to worry too much about the levels and obviously I can be looking at the VU meter on the bottom of the zoom while I'm recording and just check uh, that the levels are kind of acceptable. So I'm really quite happy with the purchase of this thing. It sounds very good and it's really well built. So um, yeah, definitely gets a thumbs up from me. So if you enjoyed this video and don't want to miss out on more, please subscribe, don't forget to rate and thanks for watching.